is not New York, no, this is Amsterdam. And without Amsterdam, there would be no New York. But I want to show you something, come on. This is the West Indies Pakhuis, the West Indian warehouse, I guess that would be in English. And there's an intimate connection between this building and New York. This is the location where all the goods coming from New Amsterdam would be stored 400 years ago. So beaver pelts um, or whatever else. It was mostly beaver pelts that would store here. I'm not sure if it was ever really full. The West Indian company never really made a profit. And uh, the directors of the company were once in a really nice building, but eventually had to move in here upstairs with the goods. And um, I used to work in this building actually, and I'd be fully aware of the building I was in and the, the beautiful connection it has to New York. I wonder if they had a ping pong table uh, back then. So it's a gorgeous building and that's why tourists from all over the world come here to enjoy historic buildings like this. But there's also the general misconception that, that America doesn't have any buildings that are as old as this one. And that's simply just not true. Because there's a building in New York that's basically just as old as this one. And I went there together with architecture historian Helene Westerhuis. And yes, that is the oldest building in New York. This is the house called the Wickoff Farm. Most of what you see is newer, but the oldest part of this house is from about 1652 which makes it only 10 years younger than the West India Punk House. We are being guided around by Joshua, who works for the foundation that runs this fantastic historical artifact. He shows us the room that gave the yes. building its birth here. The oldest section of the house. This is where the circa 1652 comes from, because it's in that year that we know that Peter and his wife were living here on the property. was living here? What was what was going on around here? Everything that you would do in your house today. Cooking, cleaning, sleeping, socializing. All in this one room? All in this one room. A family of 13. 13? Yeah. 11 children, two parents. What, in this room? In this room. Children. <laughs> <laughs> I can yeah. almost not fit 13 people in here. Well. Yeah. Well, keep in mind they would have had a uh, loft space above. And they would have had outbuildings. There are tens of thousands of descendants of the Wyckoffs. If your last name looks anything like it, you are most certainly one. And all of them can trace back their ancestry to this little room. Or with so many kids around, maybe there was some other spot where there was a little more privacy for the parents to, you know, those new generations didn't come out of nowhere, of course. Anyway, back then the house was in the middle of green fields. Nowadays it's in a fairly industrial neighborhood, right next to a McDonald's. The oldest part of the building is on the left. The bigger house on the right is a little bit newer, from about 1730. 1730, this map of the earth is from that era. It's how the world looked like to the most informed Europeans. There's the solar system with the sun in the middle and wonders from all over the world. Elephants, and I guess that's a dragon, and this is really the ugliest lion I've ever seen. And I'm just not sure what this is. Ah, North America. Look at it. California was still an island. The Great Lakes basically stretched to the west coast. And New Nederland was still New Nederland. Uh, wait a minute. No, it wasn't. This map might be from 1730. New Amsterdam existed from around 1625 till 1664, when it was renamed to New York. Historians have to deal with confusing sources like this all the time. And so it is still not fully clear if the Wyckoff Farm is really from around 1652. And that's why the foundation would love to do physical scientific research on the house, to date it. Because holes remain in the story of Peter Klaassen and his family. Based on written sources, we know when he moved to his farm, but who built the house and when exactly remains a guess. It could well be a little bit older, or technically it could be newer and this whole video would be useless. But it is important because, you know, primary sources, documents can say that there was a cottage on this property in a certain time, but they're not going to say that it was this particular cottage. We don't really know because an earlier house could have burned down 
and they could have rebuilt on that exact location. Wouldn't that matter for you, though? Yeah, I think so. I think it would be a huge disappointment to lots of people, um, just because this is such a, a novelty in New York. But um, I do think it's important for future generations to establish that now. This cat <coughs> agrees. There are plenty of hints that the house is pretty old, something Helene knows how to spot in the attic of the house. This is one of the behind the scene treasures of the Wacom. Wow. Can you, you show it to people or not? Occasionally we have cellar to attic tours. Attics are good for historians because they usually get changed less than the rest of the house. May I, Joshua? Yes, please. Thank you. Oh, God. <laughs> this is renovated. I think this is... this. Might even be 21st century, but it's possibly 20th, highly likely 20th century. But then you see the difference between this construction and those old beams that's here. Like, for instance, here, those. Those are much older. And here, there's also wooden, yeah, that's a wooden nail. Well, there's a reason why they were made of wood, because they didn't have other materials. So that's also an indication to date it. Yeah, yeah, but this is fantastic. Kijk nou toch. Amsterdam was lucky enough to preserve its historic buildings. New Amsterdam wasn't so lucky. But I'd say, cherish what you have, even if it's just a few beams. If you'd like to know more about this forgotten part of American history, please subscribe and check out these other videos about the Dutch roots of America.